Hi, this is Bob working on a Heathkit SS9000 synthesized transceiver and I have here a circuit board that does not work and one of the first things I'm going to do is to remove these ICs and clean them and I thought I'd make a little video and show you just how I do that. I get quite a few of these circuit boards going just by cleaning the ICs and of course this applies to any sort of equipment not just the heath kits so what you want to do is first remove an IC like that and then I take the IC <coughs> and I clean the pins with a eraser I held this eraser up against a bench grinder and made a slanted tip here like this so that I can slide it down into the pins and clean the pins off with the pencil eraser. So you put the eraser in the pins like that. Now on these sockets the connection is made on the inside of the pins so I don't clean the outside. So I just wipe it, I don't know, five or six times like that then flip it over do the pins on the other side, five or six like that. Then I just blow the residual, residual eraser that has flaked off. I blow that off. And then this is just a piece of plastic. Uh, you can use a little screwdriver, it doesn't matter. And I wipe on there. Let me show you here. This is a uh, little piece of circuit board that was laying here on the workbench. I put a squirt, squirt, a glob, because this is actual thick grease, silicon grease, which I get on this plastic tool. And once I clean these, I put a tiny bit of silicon grease on the tool and then I wipe it on the inside of those pins like that and I do both sides again like so and then reinsert the IC now many times the ICs don't quite line up you can place them like this trying to show this. Place them like this on a board and bend all of the pins on one side in just a little bit. <clears throat> and the way these sockets are made they automatically straighten them back out so that they're proper. So if you bend them in just a little bit they go right in and make good contact. Then the only thing left is a visual examination to see if any pins are sticking out or folded under or something like that. Now after I have done, I'll do three or four, after I have done three or four it's my habit to uh, take some nail polish. This is some white nail polish I got at the dollar store but uh, there, any color would be just fine. I have used blue and red and I'll just put a little dot of nail polish and I put it on the number one pin end where the marker is there for pin number one and I put that on those ICs to show that A I've cleaned and those are ready to go. Now some of these pins are very very dirty or corroded. They could be quite corroded. Oop. So what I'm doing here now yeah, I kinda rock them back and forth a little bit to break them loose when they haven't been out till I can get both parts of the removal tool in there and get them out. Now this one here is obviously quite corroded. I can see it. They get even, you get a lot worse than that even. So on this one here, since it's more corroded, I'm going to use an X-Acto knife with a number 11 blade, which is the pointed blade. And I just scrape each pin about three times. You know when you're doing this, be sure that you uh, <coughs> have your wrist strap on and my wrist strap is a 
grounded lead I think I showed you in the uh, other videos. It's a lead with a 3.3 uh, mega ohm resistor. You could use a 1 mega ohm resistor. You could use a 100,000 ohm resistor. It doesn't matter. You just want some resistance in there to bleed off the voltage from your body, the static. And I clip that lead onto my wristwatch. And that end of that, of course, has gone under the ground screw on the electrical conduit that is here in my workshop. I have conduit on there and that's all grounded and so I just put that under the center screw on the electrical outlet to get a ground point and that works very well. So now I have scraped those with the X-Acto tool X-Acto like I said a number 11 I believe it is and then I will again get a tiny bit tiny bit of the silicon grease on this tool. This tool is nothing but a piece of plastic, cheap plastic, uh, that I made a, a tip on. You can use a small pocket screwdriver. It works just fine. And I put that silicon grease, just wipe this over like that. Wipe this over like that. Now, I, I have gotten the silicon grease at auto parts supply stores. This is the clear silicon grease, and uh, if you go into an auto parts store and you ask for clear silicon grease, uh, I have seen it at some of the stores in little tiny packets for 99 cents or something like that. One of those packets should last you for months and months working on these things. And there we are, another one done. <coughs> I do about three or four, and then I mark them with the nail polish. That's just my way of keeping track of where I've been and which ones are done and which ones are not. Because I lose track. So I just wanted to show you my method of cleaning those ICs. I also get in here and I scrape the other connectors like this if they're needed. Now one thing you can do with those connectors while you're working the first thing I try is I put the other part on like that and then I plug them in and out usually six times because they will kind of wipe themselves clean so you want to do that on the connectors wipe them clean like that and then a tiny bit of silicon grease like so and they'll last a long time you know these connectors when they're made this is a type K Molex connector and when they're made they're in that machine that they're made they get a tiny bit of grease on them because the machine is greased and they have a tiny bit of grease that gets onto these connectors and that tiny bit of grease keeps them from corroding uh, tin plated connections. These are tin plated connections. This is tin plated. The little connectors in here are all tin plated. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. A tin plated connection is a loose connection waiting to happen because they corrode. And when they corrode, that corrosion that builds up on them is an insulator. And so that's how you get loose connections with tin plated connections. They just form naturally. So uh, that little bit of oil that is put on by the factory when they're made keeps them just fine for the first few years, let's say a couple years, and then somebody has to come along like me or you and clean them and replace that little bit of oil and I replace it with silicon grease which is an insulator you don't want to use something that's conductive that will short out the connector and the uh, silicon grease I found has worked great I've used it for about 30 years now and not had any problems with it so uh, that's what I use <coughs> and I wanted to uh, mention that let's see if there's anything else there I guess that's it for today so uh, 73's and good DX.